Home network installs do require a few tools that will help you complete the job both efficiently and effectively. In today's video, we'll take a look at six network installation tools I think you should have as part of your arsenal. Hey everyone, it's Chris here from homenetworkgeek.com where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoy the video and you find it helpful, it'd be great if you could drop the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to turn on notifications. Now let's jump straight in with our first tool, which is the punch down tool. A punch down tool, which can also be known as a crone tool, is a hand based tool that's designed to connect the wires within an ethernet cable. This could be to a patch panel, a punch down block, a keystone module, or a surface mount box. The name punch down is given as the wires are punched into place under force. Now punch down tools are relatively basic in that they consist of three main parts the handle, a spring based mechanism and a slotted blade that is removable. When the tool is used to connect the wires, the blade can be used to remove any excess which leaves a neat and tidy installation. A wire stripper is another hand tool that is designed to remove the outer casing from the ethernet cable exposing the copper wires found inside. This protective covering is known as the jacket. There are many different wire strippers available given how there's a big range of shapes and sizes of cables and that's not just ethernet cables. This doesn't mean you have to go out and purchase them all thankfully as a lot of wire strippers will come with several sets of blades which is quite useful for us. Now wire strippers are incredibly easy to use, they couldn't really be much easier. Simply place the cable between the blade and the holder rotate the wire strippers round 360 degrees and then slide them off to remove the jacket. Now if any of the tools on this list should be considered essential, it would definitely have to be a screwdriver set. Now you more than likely already have access to a ton of different screwdrivers, however I like to keep all of mine together in a convenient carry case. This way I only have one place I know I need to look for for any screwdriver that I need rather than having to root through several drawers just to look for the one that I need at that time. Having a variety of good quality screwdrivers is not only a necessity for home network installs and troubleshooting, but for general everyday use. But for a home network, a Phillips screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver will likely cover most of your bases. But getting a set that includes several different shapes and sizes is recommended given how inexpensive they are to buy. Now the purpose of a wire cutter is pretty self-explanatory. They're designed to cut through a cable and all of its wires. They are most commonly used to cut copper of which ethernet cables are made, but they can also be used to cut through iron, brass, aluminium, and steel. A good quality set of wire strippers will usually come with a insulated handle so you don't get a shock from whatever you're cutting through. That being said, it's always recommended that you have the power switched off and all of the cables disconnected before you go cutting through anything. There are a few different types of wire cutters available and you'll probably be okay with just the one, but just like the screwdriver set, they're pretty inexpensive to buy, so you're probably worth having several different shaped ones. Diagonal cutters have intersecting jaws which cut the cable at an angle which leaves a nice flat tip. You may hear these referred to as flush cutters as it's a way of differentiating them from symmetrical cutters which leave a pointed tip. If you were to only purchase one of these cutters, I would recommend the diagonal cutters as it allows you to cut a wire very close to its place and leaves a nice flat tip to be working with. Put simply, a crimp tool is used to connect the wires of an ethernet cable onto the end of an RJ45 connector. The result of this process is known as the crimp, hence the name for the tool. Without the use of the crimp tool, the connector will simply fall off the end of the ethernet cable. So if you're planning on making your own ethernet cables, which I would recommend by the way, a crimp tool will be essential. They work by first placing each of the wires into the RJ45 connector in the correct order. Once all the wires have been fed into the connector, the connector itself is then placed into the crimp tool and then you squeeze the handles together tightly to perform the crimp. The force generated punctures the connector and holds onto each of the wires. The end result allows for data to be transmitted through the connector. A final tool is a cable tester, which is designed to test both the strength and connectivity of an ethernet cable. There are several different types of testers available, each of which is able to test a particular type of cable, with some of the higher end testers being able to test several types of cable. Now this may be useful if you're planning on working with different types of cable, but for us in our home networks, you probably don't need it. One that just tests ethernet cable will be perfect for us in our home networks. The tester is able to tell you if the cable's been wired correctly and there's no damage along the line, as well as the signal strength you can expect across the entire length of the cable. Given that so much data is transmitted over the cable, 
It's important to make sure they're set up correctly, especially if you have several different lengths of cable to run. It's also worth using the tester to test the signal strength across the length of the cable to make sure it's suitable for transmitting data and that there's no outside interference that could affect the signal. Although it may not be essential for a home network, I've personally found having a cable tester handy to be incredibly useful. The last thing you want to do is run all of your cables and then only find out one of them's damaged. Test all of the cables before running them in place and hopefully you'll avoid this problem. So if you're looking to set up your own home network, I would recommend investing in these six sets of tools. Even if you don't necessarily need to use them all at once, it's reassuring then you've got access to them should you need to perform some troubleshooting or want to upgrade your home network in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to turn on notifications. Don't forget to head on over to homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles on everything home networking. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.